So here we are in um, part two now. This is where we start to um, set this system up, this temporary um, live Linux system that we've booted into where we set it up. And it's worth bearing in mind if you have a power cut or you decide to shut down the machine or pull the power in any way, you'll lose all of these settings because um, these are all made in the live setting and this is all held in memory. It's not being written to disk or anything. So that's worth bearing in mind if you um, if you uh, do lose um, the system in any way that you'd have to go through a lot of this to set it all up again. The formatting, obviously, that's been done to the disk, so that'll still be there, but it's the the bits, most of the bits we're about to go through that um, you will lose. So preparing the host system, this is the system we're in at the moment, the Endeavor OS, that's the host system. And the first thing we've got to do is check the host system requirements. So this is what my videos are about that I mentioned. I did 10 videos on different uh, flavors of Linux to find out how prepared they are to, to be used for compiling Linux from scratch. And as I say, Endeavor OS is um, prepared. We shouldn't need to do any changes here, but it's worth checking anyway. And to do that, there's this simple script here, which we can copy and paste into the terminal. Uh, right. So I'm just holding the left button now while I scroll with the map the wheel just to get to the bottom of that screen. So I've highlighted this all and all I need to do now is just to center click to paste all of that. It does get messed up in the terminal but it will have gone in there. Don't don't worry about that. Just press enter at the end of it. And you can see it's running this script. And it's completed. And one thing's important, the last bit, it says G++ compilation, in case you know it's got to the end of the script. So all we need to do now is just to verify that these versions, which are the minimum versions required, um, and in some cases the maximum version, because anything above that version hasn't been tested. But the important thing is that the versions that are printed here are the same or greater than the versions that are in the book. So the first one got bash 3.2. You can see bash 5.1.8. So it's way beyond what's required, so that's okay. And it also says that bin sh should be a symbolic or hard link to bash. And you can see it's printed in here as if it was a symbolic link. Bin sh points to user bin bash. So that's okay. The next thing is bin utils, which should be greater than 2.25. We've got 2.36.1, and that's okay. It's less than 2.37 as well, so that's good. The next one, Bison 2.7. We've got 3.7.6, and user bin yak should be linked to Bison. So it says here yak is Bison, so that's that's good as well. Bzip 2, we've got 1.0.8. Bzip2 should be 1.0.4 or greater, so that's okay. Core util should be 6.9 or greater. We've got 8.32, that's good. Diff util should be 2.8.1 or greater. We've got 3.8. Find is 4.2.31. We've got 4.8.0, so that's good. Gork should be 4.0.1, and we've got 5.1.0. And it also says user of bin orc should be a link to gork. So you can see here, user bin orc points to user bin gork, so that's good. Uh, sorry, GCC should be 6.2, including the C++ Pilot G++. And we've got 11.1.0, and it says versions greater than 11.2 are not recommended, so that's okay. And we've got the G++ there. GNU libc, so that's the glibc233, they want 2.11, so that's fine, and it's less than 2.34, so that's good as well. 
grep needs to be 2.5.1a we've got 3.6 that's good gzip 1.3.12 we've got 1.10 so that's fine linux kernel's got to be 3.2 and we've got 5.13, so that's fine. M4, it's got to be 1.4.10. We've got 1.4.19, so that's fine. Make should be 4.0, and we've got 4.3. Patch should be 2.5.4, we've got 2.7.6. Pearl should be 5.8.8, .8, and we've got 5.34.0. Python should be uh, 3.4 and we've got 3.9.6 said should be 4.1.5 we've got 4.8 that's fine tar is 1.22 or greater we've got 1.34 text info is 4.7 text info is 6.8 so that's fine and lastly xz should be 5.0.0 we've got 5.2.5 and again there's a quick test on the G++ that the compilation works. So you can see, as I said, the Endeavor OS has given us all the tools we need. They're all the correct versions. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you did use a previous version of uh, the, the pre previous version, and maybe in the version before that, that um, that would be sufficient as well. And as it says, the symlinks are important here. So if you are using another operating system, another Linux um, version operating system that you do need to have these sim links in place uh, as well as the versions being correct so yeah that's okay we've got a host system that's perfectly good to build Linux from scratch let's go on to the next part and you can see we're now going to start um, actually building um, Linux from scratch the actual system so creating a new partition it gives us some indications about how we might may, may want to lay this out we, we as you can see we've, we've um, or as you've seen we've got two partitions a basic file system and a swap partition so it's going to be quite a basic layout but it gives you some um, details here about slightly more complicated layouts if you wanted to use that this bit we've already done about creating the file system you can see with mkfs with the ext4 we've done that we've done the mk swap making the swap partition so that there that bit's already done now we'll get onto something really important this LFS variable this is a variable that's used which points to a directory where the LFS system is going to be built it doesn't have to be MNT LFS it's just that by convention so if you wanted to you could build Linux from scratch in a different location but the important thing is is to make sure that this variable points to the location because this variable is used in an in, as an indirection if you like an indirect way to point to where the um, Linux from scratch partition and, and the system will be located so as I say it's not 100% important that it's MNT LFS but you know if, if for some reason you can't use that location you could use your home directory for example but the important thing is that this variable this environment variable is set pointing to where you decide to build Linux from scratch so just to stick with the book we're gonna or I'm gonna use that I've highlighted it center click it and press enter and you can see nothing's happened so the commands uh, have been successful and here in this caution box it says to check and you may want to check you'll see me check it every now and then you may want to check that that command actually produces the output of the location of where you want to um, install Linux from scratch. So as you can see, we set it to MNT LFS and it's reporting that that has actually been set to MNT LFS. And as I say, I will actually check to be double sure that it's set. Um, occasionally, you'll see me do that. Um, the reason is sometimes you might have to do something else as another user and you may need to just check to see whether you've set LFS for that user if you're going to be referring to the location so um, if, if in doubt run the echo command just to be sure um, and then then you won't lose out by uh, making a mistake and not having it in there and in fact um, I don't think it mentions it. it does mention it later on that if that's not set 
there are certain commands later on which will trash the host system. So it's it really is quite important to, um, as I say, if you're in any doubt, to run this command to check that that variable is actually set. And as it says here, one way to make sure the variable is set is to modify some of the startup files for the user. It's kind of not necessary here because we're in a live, um, a live CD, a live um, distribution image, uh, so we won't be rebooting because everything's in memory. It'll just be lost when we reboot, so there's no real point in doing that here. But if you are using another actual system that's uh, on a disk um, that you've booted into that you could reboot into, then that, that's quite a good idea to do. I've done that before myself. So if we move on, we're now going to mount our new partition. So if I do FDIS-L, you'll recall, oops, you'll recall um, that the Linux partition we're going to be using is SDA3, and we've got a swap partition of SDA4. So you can see the first command we're going to do is we're going to make that directory. So at the moment, MNT exists, but there's nothing in it. But when we run this command, make the minus PV LFS, you can see it says we've created directory MNT LFS. So if you now look at L MNT, you can see that LFS directory has been created. And now we can mount our partition into that location. And you can see the XXX is the bit we need to replace. So we can do as we did before, just rub that dev bit out with the X's double click that, center paste, and we know we're mounting the correct partition into LFS, and you can see it says that that partition has been mounted. So that doesn't show us anything different, but if we look in actually in LFS, you can see there's lost and found the default directory that's created when you create a file system. We could also now, of course, do ls minus l dollar LFS, because we've got our ls variable LFS variable set and that obviously produces the same output because that variable will resolve to this location because that's what it's set to. And if you've gone for a more complex um, file system layout then obviously as it says here there's other commands you may need to do. And again um, it says here the instructions assume you'll not be restarting your computer which is what I'm assuming because we're in a live system, I don't have to go through all this setup again. Um, but again, you can um, put this in your FS tab if you have got a system you've booted from that you're going to be rebooting into at a later date um, and you want to carry on the build process. So you can do that. As I say, we'll be doing this in one session, so um, it's not much point in doing that. And last of all, We'll add the swap. Um, you'll see at the moment, I don't think there's any swap at the moment. No, there isn't. So I'll just highlight that command, paste it in. Oops. Uh, that's because I've highlighted too much. If you highlight this and go below the line, it will copy the carriage returns at the end. So it kind of confuses the terminal. So if you just ensure you copy just the nine. Um, then that doesn't happen. But once again, I'm going to delete this dev ZZZ. You could type in the actual partition name and replace ZZZ with the partition name. But as I said before, it's better if we're sure and just copy and paste. And you can see there's no problems then. And you can see that that's added that. If we do swap on by itself, you can see that... Um, it's got a swap partition now with 8.8 .8 gig. So it's just a little bit more than the memory uh, that's in the system. You can see the system's got 8 gig of memory. The swap's nearly 9 gigabytes of memory.